Amen. Well, uh, this week, starting this week, we are starting a new series, and we're calling it Defeating Your Giants. And giants really uh, represents many uh, different aspects. Uh, giants of offense, giants of pride, giants of sickness, giants that we face of discouragements and hopelessness and many other things, right? And so for the next couple of months, we are going to be dealing with some of these things. And, and one major that I kind of want to point out down the road that we're going to be talking about is this um, giant of addiction. And that's that either uh, uh, with drugs or alcohol or even with this pornography. And we, I just found this out that 68% in uh, of men inside the church in general 68 uh, percent are dealing with addiction of pornography 68 percent and uh, these are realities and so we're going to be dealing with that and how to defeat that uh, and also don't ever think that this is just a struggle with men it's also a struggle with women in fact, uh, last, sometime last year, I got a call, and uh, the husband was telling me that his, his wife was dealing with addiction, uh, with pornography. And I was just shocked, shocked by that. And I thought that really we're the only one men uh, that were struggling with this. Didn't know that there was a huge percentage of women that are struggling with this as well. So in the next uh, couple of year, uh, couple of years, couple of months, uh, we will be talking about some of these giants and how to defeat them, and uh, we want to give you tools really of how to do it and so today I want to talk to you about offense offense now think about that for a moment how many of you had been offended before <laughs> all right offense they're pretty real they're real real I was uh, at Walmart and uh, and uh, how many of you get so excited when you see a parking spot right by the front of the store? <laughs> right? Yeah. And so this person was pulling out, getting ready to pull out. And I was the first person there. And I get so excited. I was like, man, oh, awesome, right? And then I was, I was waiting. And the lady pulls out. And there was a person that was just driving by and saw this pulling out, this person pulling out, immediately just pulled in, pulled right in. And I was like, what? Are you kidding me? Ah, oh, no, 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 no. And so I went down and I said, ma'am, I've been waiting for this parking. And you, you, you just pulled in. And you know what she did to me? She looked at me and just completely ignored and walked <laughs> towards Walmart. And now I was offended. Are you kidding me? You're just going to ignore me? And imagine the thoughts just, that was running in my head of what I was going to do to her car. Amen. <laughs> Have you been there? Yes. And uh, isn't it interesting that we, when, when we get offended, all kinds of thoughts runs in our head. And... Uh, what about when you're driving and somebody just cuts you off? Man, we struggle with this. It's like, come on, you're messing with my manhood. Yeah. Right? And so immediately you're thinking, ah, ha, ha, you're going to cut me off? And so there's a temptation to kind of drive a little bit faster and then cut him off. Right? But isn't it interesting that when I was about to, I was thinking about what I was going to do to her car, immediately the Holy Spirit reminded me, you're a follower of Jesus Christ. You go to Walmart and buy your stuff and go home. Or when I was about to, wanting to just drive so fast and just cut that person, the Holy Spirit would remind me, you're son of the living God. What you're about to do is not of me. <laughs> um, I was watching this video the other week, or last week, in fact, and there's a Caucasian man, Caucasian man, told this African American person to go home to Africa. 
In fact, uh, Ian's brother-in-law, Joe, who's now a pastor, he tells me a story a long time ago that when he was at Costco about to pay, and he was just in line, and just kind of ready, getting ready to pay, and just kind of doing his business, and a guy, just out of the blue, said, um, you better be going home to the Philippines. So, some of these, uh, so offense, or offenses are real, aren't they? They are real. But listen to me, how you handle offenses are very critical in regards to your relationship with God. Amen. Let me repeat, how you handle offenses are very critical in regards to your relationship with God. He was betrayed by one of his closest friends. He was arrested for something that he didn't do. All of his friends left him and fled. When they arrested him, they spit in his face. They struck him with their fists. Others slapped him. One of his closest friends denied him not one time, but three different times. They were giving them all kinds of false charges, the religious folks. The soldiers have mocked him. In fact, they put a crown of thorns on his head. They forced him to carry a cross that was so heavy. And, in fact, unbearable to carry. Crucified him on the cross. And they did not stop there while he was up on the cross. They continued on mocking him and insulting him. Hmm. Jesus was offended in every way. He was. And the thing about it is that the offense that was done to him was massive. It was huge. We're looking at all of, just listening to all of the things that they did to him. Those were some major, major offenses. Would you not agree? And so to, this morning, I want to talk to you about this word offense. And I really want you to understand of how destructive it is. And I want to be able to give you some tools to carry with you so that you know how to deal with offense. The number one thing I want to talk to you about is this, is that holding on to an offense destroys lives. Holding on to offense destroy lives. Uh, let me just say this to you that I don't really think that you wake up one day and you say, man, I just want to, so for someone to offend me, and I want to hold on to some of these offenses. Anybody? But isn't it interesting that somehow we find ourselves offended and just bitter about life, right? And so uh, there's, uh, I just want to say this. Now think about this. Why would you and I would waste our energy holding on to an offense? What good is it to hold to an offense? It's not worth it. It's not worth your time and energy to be, a, to, to be carrying or whatever, uh, embracing that offense. You, why lose your joy over that? Really, now think about that. Why lose your joy over that? And so I want to encourage you by saying that don't be bitter, but always find a way to be better. Amen. Don't be bitter, but always find a way to be better. Amen. Because I want to tell you that if you hold on to offenses, the consequences of holding to it are pretty big. In fact, let me just tell you that holding on to offenses destroys marriages. 
there are so many marriages that are being broken is simply because they would not forgive. Amen. It destroys families. I wonder how many here that you know that your family is so broken is simply because of an offense. Listen to this. Churches, for heaven's sake, they're fighting and bickering. Churches. And we should be the salt and the light to the world. And here we are, churches, just fighting, bickering, and on and on it goes because of an offense. Uh, community, right? Community. They're broken and damaged simply because they're holding on to an offense. Uh, I, want you, I want you to know this, that it really destroys people holding on to an offense. In fact, you probably know, uh, probably heard this, Bill Hybels is one of my favorite pastors and leaders uh, in the nation right now. And um, he pastors Willow Creek Community Church, one of the largest churches in the nation. There was a gal who was offended, offended with Bill, offended, and offended with the church. And you know what she did? She began to lie about all kinds of stuff, and her, and she admitted to this, that the reason why she lied was because she was committed to destroy Bill and the church. My goodness. How could someone be so motivated to go after someone and lie to destroy someone's life and even the church? Do you know that a, something like that has a power to destroy? Guess what? I've been praying for my, for my brother, Bill Hybels. Because last, just this week, he announced that he is retiring. It's just simply because of that lady who was so offended that almost destroyed everything. They're real. Marriages end up in divorce because of an offense. Families get broken because of it. Church family gets divided by it. Churches fighting against other churches, neighbor to neighbor, for what? For what? I want you to know that the effects of offense is simply this. You become bitter. It eats you. It's like a poison. It takes your joy away. Offense destroys people. I have seen how destructive holding on to it could be. If we don't forgive, listen to this. Usually, we become like the person we don't forgive in the area of negative character and persona personality traits. Hmm. God's word, friends, is very clear about what we said before our mind to dwell upon. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 7 says this. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. When someone hurts or abuses you, if you won't forgive, you set up a movie in your mind of the events and emotions that go with it. And the thing about it, friends, is um, this movie is on the loop, <laughs> right? And it plays over and over and over again. It becomes the, the issue that you dwell upon. It is what you said before your mind and emotions, and you become like that person. Do you know the many pedophiles who were molested as children or were on the receiving end or violent in the form of emotional, mental, or physical abuse, do you know that they end up becoming like the person that abused them? A large percentage of pedophiles end up becoming like the person that abused them. Very interesting. Do you know that there's a large percentage of alcoholics that were raised by one or both parents that were alcoholics, and as a child, they promise themselves that they will not touch an alcohol or become an alcoholic. Yet, 
down the road, they find themselves consumed by alcohol. Many times I have encountered people who marry an individual who is like the parent who hurt them. Hmm. Do you know, friends, that hurting people hurt people? Hurting people hurt people. And uh, I remember when, uh, when Nathan was three years old, and some of you have heard this story, but for the sake of what we're talking about here, I want to just point something out. I grew up pretty damaged. I was abused in every way. And specifically, I want to talk to you about this physical abuse. I was abused almost every day. I kid you not. I, my child uh, life was just damaged. And so that was my experience. I was so hurt. And the pain uh, that I had to, man, uh, to deal with on a daily basis was just massive. And so I, and then I get married and we have Nathan. Well, Nathan, one of his problems when he was a child, he wouldn't eat. And he would sit there for hours just looking and staring at his food and wouldn't touch it. And so this went on for <laughs> weeks, months. I mean, I kid you not. But now the boy, you can't stop the boy from eating. And uh, so now I'm thinking, you know, I, how I wish he was three again. <laughs> yeah. And so anyway, he would just stare at this. And I would get so frustrated. Come on, Nathan. Come on, son. And I would get so frustrated one day. I had it. He was sitting there, and I was like, ah, just eat. And he wouldn't eat. All of a sudden, I lost it. And I said, ah. And all of my experiences, when I was a child, when I was being abused, I wanted to just punch the boy. And when I was about to punch him, all of a sudden, God spoke to me. Do you really want that curse into your family I began to weep because I didn't want to because there is a curse that ran that ran in my family divorce um, abuse in every way addictions uh, a lot of ungodly things our mouths were so filthy bad just a lot of garbage Hatred, holding on to an offense, all of that, just bad. I didn't want to carry that, carry that on and bring that to my family. In fact, listen to this. Can you imagine if I punched that boy? It would have destroyed my marriage and my family. And that's why an offense is very destructive. Would you not agree? Yes. Amen. Um, this ordeal or this thing with Annalisa about her sight, her going blind and all this stuff. Um, when I heard that last year that that's the direction she's going to go and just, she's going blind. I was angry. You know to who? I didn't know this, but I, God revealed this to me. I was angry at God. My attitude was like, God, are you kidding me? I, my wife and I have served you faithfully. We've given up so much to serve you. And my wife loves you so much and she walks with you. And you're going to let that happen? Are you kidding me? And then my wife has the guts to share with me about her experience with God. And she said, uh, you know, honey, I've surrendered to God. And I was like, what does that mean? And she was like, well, I had a conversation with God that if I go blind, if that's the direction that God wants me, if that's the road that God wants me to take, I'm okay. Because my love for Jesus will not change. And I just, I'm just praying to God that He will give me His grace to sustain me through that time. 
you know what? You would think that I would just be like, oh, honey, wow, wonderful. I was offended. I was like, good for you. I wasn't willing to surrender that. And so for three months, I was just bitter. And I was just like, forget that. I'm not going to surrender that. In fact, my attitude was like, if, if my wife goes blind, can you imagine the major adjustments I have to make? I mean, I, I pass her at church and blah, 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 and all this. And no. And th for three months, I was bitter. And I didn't know that I was mad at God. And then one day I was driving to the gym. And I know you're looking at me. Uh, doesn't look like it, but I try to. Uh, but 5.30 in the morning I was driving after three months of just being bitter. You know what God said to me? You know your problem, son? Is that you think your love for your wife is greater than my love for her. And just want to remind you, son, that before she became your wife, she was already mine and my daughter. And guess what happened to Big Angelo? Big Angelo became, a, uh, started to weep like a baby. And I was able to surrender to God. But can you imagine if I wasn't careful? And I just like do this with God all the time? It would have destroyed my relationship with God. But do you know the real thing is that so many pastors, just like me, have done this to God, forget you, and left the ministry, and left God completely. Not only pastors, so many Christians. They prayed for a specific prayer. God doesn't answer their prayers, and they get mad. And guess what? They're not serving. They're not following Jesus. They're mad at God. And they became, a lot of them became atheists. They hate God. This is real stuff, isn't it? Yeah. But I want you to know that offenses are real. I had been offended. In fact, I didn't realize this, that I was mad at God at one point. And uh, God is just so gracious that in spite of my anger, in spite of just my attitude towards him, that he would, just, he would still love me. And uh, I just appreciate God's love. I really do. You see a man that is so broken. And uh, your pastor is not super men. Um, just like you. I share the same struggles. I get angry. I get offended. I get... Uh, I sin, just like you. But isn't it so wonderful to know that there's a God who loves me and loves you so much in spite of? That's the beauty of the one we serve. So, um... Forgiveness really is the number two I want to talk to you about is forgiveness is a decision. Knowing that it is so destructive. But it's also, I want you to know that forgiveness is a decision. Forgiveness is never based on feelings and emotions. I mean, have you heard people that I don't feel like forgiving? 
Well, let me just say this, because so many Christians would say this. We get tripped up believing that we don't have to forgive because we don't feel it, or I don't feel like it. Nothing could be further from the truth. And uh, have you heard people, the Christians, that would say, I have to be true to my feelings? And that's like saying I have to be true to myself. Well, listen to this. Whatever we are true to, we end up serving. So do you want to serve your feelings and yourself? If you're going to be true to your feelings and serve them, in doing so, you serve yourself. And definitely you will not be serving the Lord. As Christians, we are not called to be true to our feelings or our emotions or true to self. We are called to be true to Christ Jesus. Are you with me? We're not called to be true to all this, whatever emotions that we have. But definitely, you and I are called to be true to Christ himself. To, to obey Christ regardless of how we feel. Whether we want to forgive somebody or not. It doesn't matter. Regardless of all of what, what we feel or how we feel, it doesn't matter. Because we obey Christ. Because he said, forgive. And the number three I want to talk to you about is be quick to forgive. Be quick to forgive. Would you not agree that Jesus had the right to hold on to all of these offenses that they did to him? In fact, do you know that he had the power to wipe out not only those people that arrested him, but the, human, the whole entire human race if he wants to? Just by his words. I mean, he's the word, right? God, he's the word. And he would just, all he needs to do is to speak it and all of us are done. Right? But guess what he said when he was up on the cross? Father, forgive them. For they do not know what they do. And so what is Jesus telling us when we are offended? Forgive and forgive quickly. What, what does the Bible teach us about offense? Well, forgive and forgive quickly. And here's the thing. That the Bible leads us to truth and to truth alone that takes us to the road to freedom. Letting go and forgiving sets us free. And uh, why forgiving is so important? The reason being, friends, is it is the antidote to any offense. Yeah. Holding on to an offense and unwilling to forgive is very distract destructive. We've seen it. Remember Cain and Abel? I mean, the, the Cain was so offended that he ended up killing his own brother. His one and only brother. Because of an offense. He was mad at God. And so therefore, he saw his brother and killed him. Do you know the religious people were so offended because of what Jesus was teaching? And they were so committed to destroy him and put him on the cross. I want to tell you, it's so destructive. I have realized that forgiving people is really hard for you and me. In fact, I think it's one of the most difficult things that God would ask us to do. Minor insults and offense can be easier to forgive, but what if the offense against you is so painful, it's massive, it's big, it's huge, and it seems like there's no way I'm going to forgive. I get that. How can you forgive someone who has hurt you so bad? I get it. I've been there. I've been there. Thankfully, that we have the perfect example of forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Who while in the agony of the cross, he said these words, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. Here are some scriptures in which Jesus talks about the grace of forgiveness and why it is so essential. Number one, Jesus said, if you forgive others, 
the wrongs they have done to you, this is what Jesus said, your Father in heaven will also forgive what? You. But listen to this. This is a very strong statement, what, he was, what he's going to say next. But if you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive the wrongs you have done. This is a very serious statement. I don't know about you, but I'm looking at that, that if I'm not willing to forgive, that he's not going to forgive me? What? Are you kidding me? If your brother sins, number two, rebuke him. And if he, and if he repents, forgive him. If he sins against you seven times in one day, and each time he comes to you saying, I repent, you must punch him. Oh, sorry. Forgive him. I, I thought I saw punch him. Uh, sorry. You must forgive him. That's what it says. Seven times. I mean, every time you come to me, I in. Can you believe that? That I have to forgive you? Or Rocky? And Joe? Jake? Uh, number three. And when you stand and pray, forgive anything you may have against anyone so that your Father in heaven will forgive the wrongs you have done. Again, he repeated it. Do not judge others, number four, and God will judge you. Do not condemn others, and God will not condemn you. Forgive others, and God will forgive you again. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, if my brother keeps on sinning against me, how many times do I have to forgive him? You know what Jesus said? Well, Peter, Peter was like, what, seven times? <laughs> Jesus said, no, Peter, not seven times. But guess what? You're going to have to forgive them 70 times 7. So I kind of messed this up in the, first, in the first service. So many of them came, back, came at the end and said, Pastor, your math is wrong. Somehow I came up with the number 249. And uh, I don't know why. One, three, four. Six. <laughs> it's just confused with math. But 490 times in a day. This is a serious thing. So what is he saying to you and me? Forgive and forgive quickly. Because it's pretty destructive. And God is leading us to life and freedom. Hallelujah. If you're here today just offended and you're holding on to an offense I want to tell you if you don't forgive and you don't forgive quickly it will destroy you and then the last thing I want to talk about real quick is self has to die self has to die in order to defeat your giant of offense uh, a preacher once said dead men never get offended uh, that's kind of silly, but it's a pretty powerful statement. Would you not agree? Why? Because people in graves don't get hurt. Why? Because they don't have any feelings. They've, they're, they're dead to self, right? So the solution to offenses is that you and I must fully die to self. We must become totally immersed in the identity and person of Jesus Christ, dying to self and allowing Christ to live through us. Amen. That is the answer, folks. I want to tell you that if you don't die to self, you will continue to be offended. You will continue to hold on to offenses. I want to remind you of what Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 said. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. The Angelo wants... To hold on to offenses and he wants to get mad and angry, blah, 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 blah. But if I understand that if I give my life to Jesus, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Amen. Right? You cannot stop offense, offensive things coming, from, uh, coming your way. I want to tell you, probably when you leave this building... Some, some will offend you. Maybe that's the person sitting next to your car. I don't know. 
But I want you to know that it will come, but you can eliminate what offenses feed on, which is self. When we finally die to self, we will become immune to offenses. Let me just say this quickly. The power of offense, the power of offense destroys lives. The power of forgiving sets you free. True? The man or woman who doesn't forgive has forgotten the price that Christ paid for them on the cross. John Bevere. Let me say that again. The man or woman who doesn't forgive has forgotten the price that Christ paid for them on the cross. Let me leave you with this one quick passage. Philippians 4.8 Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent, praiseworthy, think about such things. Think about such things. Not your offenses. Not what are you going to do for ha to have him pay, you know, for, for you to pay him back or whatever? Or how you're going to get back? You know? Just think about those things, friends. Excellent things. Godly things. Pure. Right. And so, maybe you're here today and this message is for you. Uh, if you know deep inside of you, you are holding on to an offense if you're holding on to one, and you know deep inside of you, you are, you need to forgive. And forgive quickly. Do it right away. If you can't remember, ask God to reveal, reveal it to you. Or maybe you try to forget, but you know you can't. Maybe it has been slaving you for a long time, and you had brought that into your marriage. Ask God for strength to deal with it. Do it today. Do it now. God wants you to set you free. He really wants you to be set free. Remember this. Holding on to an offense destroys lives. Forgiving offense or forgiving others is a decision that you can make today. If you made a decision to hold on to some of those offenses and you made a decision to become bitter, you can also make a decision to forgive and to be better. Are you with me? Amen. And lastly, remember this. Self has to die in order for all of this to work and allow Christ to rule your life. And I want to tell you today, you're going to be amazed of the life that you will have. And, uh, and you're going to know how to deal with offenses. Do you receive this message today? Amen. All right, come on. Let's just give God a clap off today. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes for a moment?